How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falco, alias McDougal. Before I moved to the not-so-great white north, I was a capo in the mob. Crime's been in my family for generations. It all started with my grandpa's, Giuseppe. He was a shoemaker in the old country. Real handsome devil. Anyway, one day the village Don asked him to make a pair of shoes. The Don believed shoe size was a reflection of his manhood. His size for manhood. He could have drove a big car or bought a frickin' boat or something, but the guy wanted big shoes. What are you gonna do? Personally, I'd have blamed the whole thing on gravity, but gravity wasn't invented back then, so Giuseppe had to skip town. By the time he got to the next village, he was met by fear and respect. Dante Respect and Luciano Fear had a family that needed some muscle. Giuseppe just whacked at Don, so he seemed like a good fit. <laughs> All those years dealing with feet made him kinda homicidal, so Grandpops moved up the ranks pretty fast. Then, one day, he came to America. You mean he got run out of Italy? Point is, even though I'm living like a schmuck in Regina, I like to think he's looking down on me and smiling. And wondering why the hell you threw his family business down the crapper. You know what? Just forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. All right, scumbag. You think you can come onto my turf and just take what you want? Do you even know who I am? You got three seconds to get the hell out of here. Now, is that nice? I give you a chance to walk away, and you just laugh in my face. Did you just eat a condom? All right, enough screwing around. Say hello to my enormous friend. Yeah, that's right. Go home to your mother, you overgrown rat. Ugh. To conclude my show and tell, if a man at the park asks you into the woods to find his lost dog, remember, there is no dog. Good job, Mary. You go sit with Prudence the safety hippo. Gina, your turn. All right, let's get this over with. I want to talk about personal safety. There's a lot of creeps and weirdos out there. Not to mention stoolies, deadbeats, and guys who just don't listen. You gotta protect yourself. So, you're gonna need one of these. <gasps> She's got a gun! Relax, it ain't loaded. Now it's loaded. <laughs> All right, who took my facial stuff? No idea. Jesus Christ, you look like a 60-year-old avocado. Well, I took care of that raccoon. Set him running with his tail between his legs. At least I think it was his tail. If not, you should see the wang on that rodent. Breaking news. Celine Dion Elementary is under lockdown after reports of a gunman holding a class hostage. That's Gina's school. Oh, my God. We got to get down there right now. No can do. This stuff takes 20 minutes. Jimmy, we got to go. We got to... Where the hell's Jimmy? What are you waiting for? Let's roll! Good question, Billy. Personally, I like to go for the knees, but if you gotta take someone out, give him two in the chest and one in the head. After that, he ain't getting up no more. Okay, any other questions? <gasps> Besides, can I hold the gun? Aww. All right, we need firepower. Wanna take the Uzis? Nah, I don't want to look like a show-off. I hate to say it, but shouldn't we just let the cops handle this? You worry too much. We know what we're doing. Shots fired! We need guns, damn it! I'm filling out the requisition as fast as I can! Get your ass in there! And take some grenades! I can't remember which classroom's Gina's. I only been here once for interviews. And I was pretty drunk. Who? <laughs> There they go, Saskatchewan's finest. Fear 
cannot, Cookie. I came as soon as I heard. No time for pleasantries. I'd better get inside. But may I say, it's a glorious morning today. Damn it, McCool, there's no time. No sh Get in there and save my daughter. For Canada, where we downplay our increasingly frequent gun violence. If there ain't any more questions, I guess I'm done. Ah! Oh. <gasps> Gina, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, crap. You're the guy with the gun. Whoa, you brought shotguns? And a troll. This ain't good. We better beat it. Hey, McCool. You here for safety week? It appears you own a number of illegal guns, Jimmy. I'm going to have to conduct a thorough search of the premises. Do you have any idea the paperwork this is going to generate? Do you? You're blowing this way out of purport, purport size. Pop, this fell again. I told you it's too heavy to use as a curtain rod. Daddy, you left this in the bathroom. I almost dried my hair with it. Really? Both of you? Exactly now? Jimmy, I can't keep this under my mattress no more. It keeps poking me in my sensitive areas. <laughs> Sweet Kiefer Sutherland, Jimmy. Why you gotta make such a big deal? It's just a few home security items. Just having that one within our borders violates the Geneva Convention. This is just like Chuck Heston warned us. One day the government's gonna show up and take all our guns. Next thing you know, we're in camps, getting brainwashed about evolution and global warming. I got a constitutionary right to bear arms. Yeah, you can't tell people what to do with their sleeves. Perhaps you possessed that right when you were American, but you're Canadian now. It's true, Pop. Canada's Charter of Rights and Freedoms does not protect gun ownership. Or as they say in Quebec, la Charte canadienne des droits et libertés ne protège pas la possession d'armes. I memorized it in both official languages. Now you're turning my own son against me. And you got him talking Spanish. Is this everything? You're not holding out on me, are you? Me? Hold out on a cop? Never! Then what's that slight bump on your waistband? I'm a little excited. Thanks for noticing. Lift your shirt, Jimmy. Is this how you get your kicks, McCool? You really ought to see a therapist. For Christ's sake, just hand it over! What? You too? McCool's right. Like it or not, we're Canadian. Don't you think it's time you assimilated? No! I've had this gun since I was ten. No one's taken Remington Steel! Hand it over, Jimmy. What if I don't? Then I shall be forced to arrest you. You'll be charged, tried, convicted, then remanded to jail. The days will be lonely and the nights long, until your cellmate, Rusty, sells you to the skinheads who run the yard. No amount of toilet-brewed prison wine will erase the memory of their oddly gentle love. You want this gun, McCool? You're gonna have to pry it from my cold, dead pants. Hands, Jimmy. I think you mean hands. Whatever, you're not getting it. I'm a responsible gun owner. Hey, where'd it go? Beers, motherfucker! <laughs> I was just getting my rhythm. Ho oh, ho! Look who's back in town. Feeling strong today? Cause I got something for you. Oh crap! All right, let's do it the old-fashioned way. Put up your dukes, uh, claws. Hoofs, what do you call them foot hands? All right, which one is first? Yes! Oh, ho, ho, ho! Oh! Well, kid, you really did it this time. They're gonna kick you out of school. Yes! Unless you take this medication. No! They're putting me on drugs? It's called a pacify. It reduces psychotic tendencies in children. Side effects may include dry mouth, disorientation, nausea, and increased thoughts of murder. Eh, well, I'm sure they wouldn't prescribe it if it wasn't 100% safe. Tell that to Mr. Flip. His ma took thalidomide. Look how he turned out. Mr. Flip turned out just fine. It's not his fault he's a monster. I ain't taking him. I don't like this either. But if you don't, they'll take you away from us and send you to a special school where you gotta wear a helmet. You always told me drugs was bad. This is medicine. It comes from a nice man in a laboratory. Drugs come from a bad man on the street corner. You mean like the guys who used to work for Pop? Quit stalling, kid. Pill or helmet, your call. There. You happy? Your daughter's a freaking druggie now. 
Yeah, congrats! You just won Mother of the Year! Oh, God, I hope this is the right thing to do. Ah! Ah! Don't touch me with that thing! Ah! <gasps> I just got rolled by a f***ing raccoon! Ever since I got up today, I've been feeling off balance. And I got a persistent itch in my trigger finger. Don't you see, Pop? When you gave McCool your gun, you gave up an essential part of your American identity. You're right! Now I gotta steal it back. That's gonna be hard to do with no gun. Or you could finally embrace life as a Canadian. How the hell do I do that? By embarking on a long voyage of introspection and self-discovery. Self-discovery? Like what you were doing when I walked in here? No, I'm talking about a spiritual makeover. Did someone say makeover? What? My fashion sense was tingling. Jeans, jean shirt, and a jean jacket. It's a Canadian tuxedo. <coughs> These jeans are too tight. <coughs> ah! What was that? My balls just went back in. <gasps> and they're out. I still don't get why I'm tied up. I'm gonna teach you the most important part of being Canadian. You need to suppress your innate American urge for self-preservation and apologize to me. For what? Ow, you mother- It's the Canadian way. I wrong you, you say sorry to me. Ow! Ow! You're grounded. What are you doing? I'm using aversion therapy to turn pop Canadian. Me last week. That's for taking away my makeup. That's oh. for not letting me date a black guy. It wasn't racial. He was 40 years old. Oh. <sighs> Thanks, Petey. I feel a lot better. Sorry. Sorry. Really fing sorry. I believe we've made a breakthrough. What's going on, Petey? What's the big surprise? I present to you Canadian Dad. I don't get it. He looks the same, except he's dressed as a village people. Go on, Pop. Say it. Sorry. No, the other thing. <sighs> Forget a boot it. Oh my god, he's a whole new man! This calls for a celebration. You're finally a real Canadian. I'm so proud of you. What the f***? Hi, Mommy. Hi, Daddy. Guess what? I did all my homework. You did your homework? Uh-huh. And then I cleaned my room, and then I cleaned Petey's room, and then Uncle Chichi and me had a tea party. Who wants Huggy Boots? Gina, you feeling okay? Petey made you Canadian too? Oh, no, Daddy. It's because of the magic happy pills Mommy gave me. These rainbows are made of smiles, wishes, and good dreams. <gasps> Speaking of good dreams, I'm gonna skedaddle off to bed. Night night. Wow, I guess that a pacify stuff really works. If you want me to babysit tonight, I'm gonna need a bottle of whatever she's on. Jimmy, you didn't yell at the parking guy for scratching the car, you didn't send back that pink chicken, and you gave the squeegee kid a loony instead of running him over. Frankly, I'm blown away by the new you. Hey, we're standing in line here. Those were our tickets. Jimmy, do something. I got it. Sorry my wife yelled at you. Ah. Hold this! Here's your purse back. Keep it! Looks better on you. Some night out. I really wanted to see that movie, but no, Captain Canada here had to drive those mooks to the hospital. You're the one who wanted me to be Canadian! The Jimmy I know would have taken apart those line jumping jagoffs. Being Canadian doesn't mean you gotta let people walk all over you. I didn't let him walk all over me. I took the high road. Yeah, the high road to Wasburg. I wanted you to give up your gun, not your entire freaking manhood. What are you saying, I ain't a man no more? Because if you want a man, I'll show you a man. Come here, baby. Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> oh, there's my big, strong man. There's those big, strong arms, and there's your big, strong, your big, Strong. Give me a sec. Where are you, big fella? Well, let me concentrate. Come on, come on. Come on, what's the matter with you? Up. Come on, Sozich. 
So's each, not a meatball. So's each, so's each. <sighs> we could just cuddle. Tonight on TBS, Matthew McConaughey in Failure to Launch. <laughs> Jimmy, who died? What? I'm fine. You can't fool me. I know something's wrong. Spit it out. Well, I got this friend. See? He's having a little problem. Stop right there. Who's this f***ing friend? I thought I was your friend. Shut up. The guy's in trouble. You don't want to help? Get out of here. Okay, relax. I'm listening. All right, look. Not to get too specific, but let's just say my friend, who is not me, is no longer able to achieve or maintain a viable erection. Quit beating around the bush. What's your friend's problem? His ring-a-ding-ding's got no dong. Oh, why you gotta be so graphic? Okay, I got this. Old Cheats knows a thing or two about a thing or two. You do? Oh, yeah. There's a simple solution. Really? Thank God. Tell your friend to blow his brains out. What? That's right. It's over. He ain't a man no more. Tell him to make a dignified exit. You'll be doing him a favor. Jesus, I was mad at the guy. Now I just pity the poor son of a bitch. <sighs> Hi, Daddy. Can I nudge in there and brush Mr. Chompers? Sure, kid. Whatever. Oh, who's a big glummy pants? Let's see a smile, Captain Frowns a lot. Mommy! Daddy's being a grumpy puss. What's going on in here? Daddy's sad, Mommy. Do you think we should give him some of my magic happy pills? Huh, Mom? No! Those are for you. And not for much longer. Run along now. I don't know about you, Jimmy, but that kid's starting to freak me out. Leave her alone. She's happy. What's wrong with you? A little girl ain't a little girl no more. Can't you see that? Hey, she's Canadian. What do you want? Now, excuse me, I gotta go pay protection to some raccoons. <laughs> What's wrong, Ma? Did you see Petey's internet history? Worse. He turned your father into a Canadian, and now he's not himself. You probably don't want to hear this, but our walls are real thin, and I know you and Dad are having a <coughs> intimacy problem. Oh, God, the thought of... Mm, you listening? I know this is gonna sound wrong, but... <coughs> But I think I can help. Not another <coughs> word. Teresa, this problem runs a lot deeper than what Oh, you're talking about. Ma, he's an Italian guy. It don't go any deeper than that. You need to make him jealous. When one of my boyfriends doesn't pay attention to me, I flirt with someone else. You should do that. Jesus, forgive me for talking to my daughter about this. Let me get this straight. All I need is some stud to slobber all over me. Jimmy gets jealous, turns into the gorilla that he is, and everything's back to normal? Exactly. And then we never speak of this again. Yes. <laughs> Please. But first... <laughs> we're going to confession. Normally, I wouldn't participate in such subterfuge, but seeing as it's for Jimmy, count me in. All right. When Jimmy walks in, we're going to be on the couch smooching and canoodling. I'll be rubbing your muscles. Don't worry. It don't mean nothing. <laughs> you might want to lose the shirt and oil yourself up a bit, big guy. <gasps> Cookie, get a hold of yourself. It's been a few days. My hormones are raging here. I'll behave. <gasps> Quick, get on the couch. Oh, no! My husband has caught us in a compromising position. Surely now he will be so enraged he'll beat the crap out of my lusty paramour. What? No one said anything about- And sweep me off my feet, carry me upstairs, and make angry, righteous love to me. Cook, what are you doing? Or he could skip the beaten up part and go straight to the hot, crazy baboon loving. Look, it's real sweet of you to try and snap me out of this, but you don't gotta debase yourself with this greasy Latin hustler. Jimmy, it's me! Uh Silencio, muchacho! This is between me and my wife, who I can no longer pleasure. Snap out of it! All of this because you had to give up your stupid gun? The gun was the last thing I had from the old life. I used to be Jimmy Falcone, king of New York! Now I gotta accept that I'm Jimmy McDougal, king of the schnooks. Jimmy, you're a lot of things. A good breadwinner, a loyal husband, a totally half-assed father. 
But you'll never be a schnook. Cook, that's the sweetest thing you've ever said to me. And I wish it was true. Oh, for God's sake, he's killing me here. What do I gotta do to get through to this guy? Jimmy McDougal, former man. Gina, slow down. Jump into a lion cage? Put the kids in danger? What's that, Gina? You're in danger? Here. What do I do, McCool? Tell me. I gotta get down to the school. Where's he going? What the hell just happened? I don't know, but this spray tan is giving me a tremendous rash. <laughs> Long enough to get down here, you moron. Oh, what's with you? Why are you being so mean? I thought you was on them good girl pills. I never took those stupid pills. I've been faking it the whole time. What? Why? To get Ma off my freaking back. I've been dumping the pills in the teacher's candy dish, and Prudence, the safety hippo, got into them and went nuts! Hang on a sec, I'm not following. What's a hippo got to do with safety? <laughs> That is one angry, angry hippo. Come on, you son of a bitch. Whoa, I think you killed them. You think? Let's make sure. Come on, yeah. one more. Okay, one for me, yeah. one for you, yeah. Oh, that felt good. All right, kid, I gotta go. You be good now. Good? I mean, you be you. Will do. You know, I kind of feel bad for the kid in that suit. Suit? Jimmy, what happened? I deserved that, Jimmy. Oh my god, you're you again! Did you get a gun or something? Oh, I got one, baby. And it's made of wood! <laughs> Good evening. My name is Peter McDougal. At least it is now. I have also been called a geek, a nerd, a geeky nerd, a nerdy geek, and a geeky geeky nerd nerd. But for most of my life, I've been known as P.D. Falcone, son of Jimmy Falcone, one of New York's most notorious mobsters. But despite what you may have read about my father, he's actually been a very loving man who would do anything for his family. Strike three, you're out! Uh, I mean, home run! But then one day, the mob turned against him, as mobsters are prone to do. And they didn't care if they got any of us in the process. But he protected his family and heroically helped convict some of the most horrible men in the country, all of whom were at my communion. And that's how we wound up here, in witness protection in Regina, Regina. Saskatchewan. And if any of you think this story wasn't just one humongous rationalization, Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it! Forget about it! Forget about it! I got here as soon as I could, Jimmy. What seems to be the problem? I miss pizza. I beg your pardon? You made it sound like an emergency. It is. See, I'm in this weekly poker game and the guys order these pies, like ketchup on cardboard, and not the good kind. So I was shooting my mouth off and promised to show them real pizza. So I'm kind of committed. You should be committed. And where do you intend to get these pies? That's the beauty part. I know this place back home, best pizza outside of Italy. And they promise delivery in 30 minutes so they're free. So odds are we won't even have to pay. I'm sorry, no. Such an order may tip off your enemies. As for poker, need I remind you of the pitfalls of gambling? Aw, oh, man, don't you do anything for fun. I absolutely do. I fish, I hunt, I read, I enjoy the occasional menage a trois, I dabble in embroidery and crochet, but what I don't do is gamble. A hundred bucks says you do. <sighs> All right. I know your secrets. It's time you learned one of mine. Whoa! I don't want to know who you manage a trois with. Imagine, if you will, a young McCool. Aimless, directionless, muscleless, 
And then he discovered the wager. At first it was just harmless games of gin rummy for a penny a point, but soon that wasn't enough. It had to be a quarter, a dollar, a hundred, nor did it matter what the game was. Cards, dice, ponies, pigs! Why do you look like a hippie if it was the 90s? Stay on topic, Jimmy. Never in my life had I felt such a rush. I was hooked. I go on week-long binges and forget to feed horse. I put my sainted mother in a home and lost her rent money at the track. I turned my back on almost everyone I cared about, and they me. And I was about to lose the only one I had left. Don't go. Without you, I have no one. You're right. I'll never bet again. I know I've said this before, but this time I mean it. Yes, really. And that was the moment I vowed to put my life together. The moment I decided to be a Mountie. And I have not wagered a penny since. I just got one question. What kind of landlord lets you keep a horse in your apartment? Indeed. For Canada! And flashbacks that remain relevant to the storyline! Isn't it a glorious day in Regina? The sun is shining, the snow is melting. One can look out and see endless miles of wheat and wheat. What's up with you? Petey's got a girlfriend. Shut up! Oh, a girlfriend. Tell me about her. Her name's Rita. They kissed in the parking lot behind Mrs. McGeeby's car. Shut up! Ow! Don't ever tell me to shut up. Hello? Yes, Petey's here. Who may I say is calling? Oh, Rita! Petey speaks so highly of you. Mother, no! He speaks highly of us, too. Oh, get the f*** out of here! Mom! Ow! What was that for? Don't ever hit my big brother, you little squirt! Okay. Thanks, Gina. That was really... Toolbox. What? Toolbox! Uh, okay. So, Rita, what are you doing next Sunday? Would you like to come for family dinner? Rita, say no! Run! Good, we can't wait to meet you. Bye-bye. Oh, did you want to talk to her? That's okay. I'm gonna go take a bath. Race five. Schwa, schwa. So sorry to disturb, Premier. These documents just arrived from Ottawa for your immediate attention. Keep your knickers on, laddie. I'm playing. Put them with the others. All right, Jimmy, you Scottish bastard. It'll cost you five more if you want to see my cards. Or do you not have the balls, you nutless lassie? I see your five and raise another five. Fold. Read them and weep. Kings and nines. Three ladies. Sounds like my crib every night. hey oh. <gasps> Grab a chair, McCool. We need some fresh blood. Uh, thank you, sir, but I don't gamble. Come on, McCool. The engine's taking everything we got. And how often do you hear that? Fellas, if the man don't gamble, the man don't gamble. Schwa, schwa. Where I come from, the only man who don't gamble are ladies. Well, I suppose one hand won't hurt. Uh, Jimmy, I'm a little short on cash. Would you extend a man a small loan? <laughs> you sure you want to do this? What about everything you said the other day? I've been thinking about that these past few seconds. I haven't gambled in almost 15 years. Clearly a man with a gambling problem couldn't achieve that. Okay, I'll give you a friendly loan at 18%, but this is business. No one's gonna take it easy on you, not even me. Jimmy, if I enter that game, it's you and the others I'd be worried about. Any up, boys, it's my deal. Gentlemen, I don't even have to look at the cards. I look into your eyes and I know what's in your mind. You want us to think you made your straight, but you never got the nine. You made your trip sevens, but you don't know if they're good enough. You're bluffing with an ace-king high and you're cheating on your wife. You're disgusting. Now I know my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with me? <laughs> I see your ten and raise ten more. What are you doing? Nothing. Just a long blink. Open your eyes. No. All right. I still think you're bluffing. Call. Full house. And finish blink.
Raise 500, and that should send you home. Jimmy, you just walked into my trap. I see your 500, and I raise you 10,000. <gasps> Bloody Ouch. hell! Swear, swear. Buddy, you're already into me deeper than you want to be. What's the matter? Are you chicken? McCool, you don't got this one. Buck, 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 Look, buck. You started strong, but now Lady Luck is banging another guy. Oink, 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 oink. Just walk away. Moo, moo. Who you calling a cow? All right, you got it. Ten G's more. Four kings. Four aces. What? You owe me 50 large, special agent. I... I... I don't have it. Then I'll put you on a plan. In the meantime, I'll take some collateral. No, not horse. What have I done? <clears throat> I tried to warn you, buddy. Now I own you. For Canada! And... <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just walk him out from here. Hey, Cheech, I'm making a list of stuff to ask for from McCool. He can't pay us back, so he's got to let us do whatever we want. What should I put you down for? A puppy. You don't need McCool for that. You can get a puppy anyway. Can I? No, because I'd have to walk it and clean up after it. I'm thinking more like taking a family on a cruise. Me included? Yeah, you included. Then who's going to watch the puppy? There is no puppy! Jimmy, what kind of sad childhood did you have that you hate puppies? Hi, I need your help. How do I get Rita out of coming for dinner? Why do you want to do that? Because she's Persian, and you know how our family is with people who are different from them. But what's wrong with being Persian? Everyone loves Paris! No, not Parisian. Persian! Iranian from Iran? Oh, you mean like one of those chicks who straps bombs on her chest and goes into nightclubs? I never got that look. No, that's what I'm talking about. That's racist. You take that back. Racism is ugly, and I'm pretty. Mom, Petey said we're racist. And I'm pleased to say I am no longer gambling, and I'm ready to pay my debt. You're a little light. Uh, the ATM was out. Bank messed up the transfer. Checks in the mail? You don't think we heard these before? Dog ate it. He has a dog? All right, I don't have it all. But I'm doing the best I can. I understand. It's a lot of money to get all at once. So, in lieu of cash, there's a number of favors you can do for us. That's blackmail! You owe me 50 G's from gambling. Want to take that up with your supervisor? Jimmy, please, don't do anything rash. I've taken on a whole array of extra jobs. I'll get you your money by any means necessary. Except crime. How do you make money without crime? Indeed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to attend. I miss you, old friend. <coughs> I deserve as much, but I shall get you back. For Canada! Oh, where these boots are made for walking. Are you satisfied with your long-distance carrier? at the newsstand. I don't believe it. I know! They printed my letter! Not that. That's McCool on the cover. I can't believe he'd stoop this low for money. It's really sad. Jeez. I don't know if I should feel bad for the guy or intimidated. There you are. Did you know your son is ashamed of us? What? Petey, get down here! Yes, Pop? Your mother says you're ashamed of us. What the hell's that about? Okay, I'll be honest. This girl I like is coming to dinner, and she's Middle Eastern, and I'm terrified that you, one of you, most likely you, will offend her, and she'll come to hate me for it. Petey, you gotta relax about this stuff. When I was growing up in the old neighborhood, we was all everything. We was all friends. It didn't mean nothing. We called each other Dagos and Hebes and Mix and N-words. You actually used the N-word? Yeah, but only to their faces, never behind their backs. 
That would be insensitive, something a spick would do. Ugh. You see? Your father makes good sense. Mother, a turban? Really? It's not a turban, it's a towel. Yeah, what's wrong with having a towel head? You guys are killing me. Nobody's killing nobody. Just let me frisk this girl when she gets here. No bomb, no problem. Special Agent McCool can't come to the door right now. Please leave a message in the mailbox. We know you're in there, McCool. No, you don't. He's got a point, Jimmy. Can anyone ever really know anything? McCool, you can't avoid us. It's your job to take care of us. My next payment isn't due until tomorrow. We ain't here for the money. Oh, in that case, may I interest you in some Helen DiCarlo cosmetics? Jeez, you look like hell. Have you lost height? Let me go get my samples. I'll be right back. Look at him, Cheech. He's a shadow of his former self. No dignity, no self-respect. He's given up on everything he cares about. And it's my fault. So? Just saying. All right. Who wants moisturizer? McCool, sit down. You know that list of requests we gave you? I think we was thinking too small. First, we'd like to go visit the old neighborhood. Jimmy, you know that's impossible. Then pay up. Fine. I'll work it out. Also, maybe a cruise. Fine. And a puppy. Fine. No puppy! Fine. Come on, McCool, pull yourself together. You're making me feel bad. Where's our usual back and forth of Tony Banta? You know what, Jimmy? You're right. Good, let's get back to it. So, if they do another one of those private rocket ships to outer space, I think Petey would like that. No, no to everything. It all stops now. Yeah, this is what I like. You and me going at it, mambo a mambo. Now my turn. You want me to take this up with your supervisor? You don't have to, Jimmy. I will pay you what I owe you, but I will besmirch my uniform no more. As of tomorrow, I will resign my commission as a Mountie. Holy hell. Bum bum bum. Jimmy, look at this. I'm talking to a squirrel. Bum bum bum. <laughs> I mean, you should have seen the guy. I know it's hard to imagine, but he looked bad. Real bad. It is hard to imagine. <laughs> I never should have lent a guy with a gambling problem all that money, and then I pushed him on top of it. He's a stand-up guy for a cop. He's always been fair to us, and we could do a lot worse. Even his quitting shows a little back bacon. That's how they say it in Canada. Jimmy, are you developing a conscience? Conscience? Nah. I just got this inner sense of right and wrong that's impelling me toward moral action. What are you saying? I broke him, so I gotta fix him. I'm gonna let him off the hook. Wipe the slate clean. You really are a lovable teddy bear. Yeah, don't tell anyone. Mommy! Daddy! I can't sleep! What's wrong, sweetheart? I heard you and Daddy talking through the wall, and Daddy says he's gonna let someone who owes him money not pay? I don't understand! <laughs> I'm scared! Oh, sweetie, there's nothing to be scared of. The man owes me more money than he's got, and it's destroying him. He's doing it again, Ma! He's doing it again! <laughs> oh, sweetie, it's a sin to let others suffer. Oh, like a hurt animal? Then we gotta do the Christian thing and put him out of his misery. Let's whack him. Aw, oh, Gina. That's very generous of you, Jimmy. I would be forever in your debt, and so I cannot accept. No strings, honest, and the blackmail stops. You can stay a Mountie. It's more complicated than that. To recover from my addiction, I have to take responsibility for my actions, even if that means doing shameful, shameful things. Eh, no one's gonna buy that magazine. Really? Tell me the truth, Jimmy. Do you find me attractive? Okay, we're not going there. Isn't there anyone you'd be willing to take help from? Only a true loved one. But I have no siblings. Daddy left when I was very young and Mummy lost her marbles. All I had was horse. Tell you what, don't quit your Mountie thing just yet. Give me till the end of the week. Can you sign this? Certainly. You want a party? Certainly not. Well, define party. I still don't get it. It's simple. McCool won't let me forgive his debt, so he's just gonna have to find the money on his own. He'll give it back to me, and everybody's square. I have found a satchel of money on the street. It must be returned to its rightful owner. What an asshole. I can't believe it. 
You try to help a guy and it bites you in the ass. Well, you know what they say. Try to help a guy and it bites you in the ass. The funny thing is, I still want to figure out a way to help him. I'll get it, I'll get it. Hi, Petey. Thanks for inviting me. Is that her? I'll be right out. Look, there's no time to explain. Just don't judge me by my family. And whatever happens, I'll protect you. And no, I have no idea why there's a horse in our living room. Hi, you must be Rita. I'm Cookie. She's adorable. Yes, she is, yes, she is. Come sit. Dinner will be ready in about 10 minutes. So, Rita, tell me about yourself. What would you like to know? I don't know what I'd like to know. What do your parents do? I knew it. Just because she's from the Middle East, you automatically assume her parents must be terrorists or taxi drivers. I never said... My father is a dentist and my mother is a stay-at-home mom. And no, it's not because her father will punish her mother if she works, thank you very much. Two of my wives were stay-at-home moms. Well, without the kids. <laughs> Basically, they were leeches. <laughs> Your uncle's funny. Not really, just retarded. So, Rita, are you thinking about college yet? Why? Because Muslim women aren't allowed to go to school? They're just supposed to stay home and be subservient to their man? Is that what you're asking? I give up. Jimmy, you want to ask her anything? Okay. Rita, say something you did is destroying a guy, and all you want to do is make peace. But he don't want peace. He just wants to keep the same old pattern going. What do you do? What's that supposed to be? Some warped metaphor of the Arab-Israeli conflict? Rita, hi. I love what you're wearing. What'd you expect? You people! What, she was supposed to show up in a burqa and a turban going... Petey, enough! Can you talk about anything other than my race? Me? Race? That's it, a race! Yes, Petey, I'm Persian, and that's all you can see. But I'm a real person with real feelings, and you've done nothing but make me uncomfortable since I got here. I'm sorry, Mrs. McDougal. You all seem lovely, but I don't think I can stay for dinner. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with driving a taxi. It's an honest, decent living. And yeah, I lied. My father drives a taxi. You dirty, racist snob. <laughs> One way or another, them Arabs always explode. Look, he won't take the money from me. If I just give it to you, he'll know it came from me anyway. You gotta get this money on your own. I know he broke his promise to you and you're mad, but he's your best friend and you're all he's got. So you can stay mad at him or you can help him. His life is in your hands. Or you can keep bunking with Cheech for the rest of your life. <laughs> Whoa! I've never been with a four-legged broad, but I'm open to anything. Don't kiss, please don't kiss. How you doing? Good? Yeah, well, if I asked you that question in the old life, I wouldn't know if you was actually telling the truth. Cause back then, you couldn't trust nobody. For he's a jolly good fellow, we can't afford happy birthday. For he's a jolly good fellow. Blow out your candles, Jimmy. <gasps> <laughs> Most guys learn not to trust people by getting screwed over. But it was birthday cake that taught me. You know what? You blow him out. This guy, so suspicious. No one's gonna pull that trick again. Hmm. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> There's an expression. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, I will rip your fucking ears off. Really? Do I look stupid to you guys? 
There! There's your fucking cake! It's okay. He missed my dick. Anyway, now that I live among the goody good people of Regina, I still don't trust nobody. Yeah, yeah, thanks to you, I don't got a spleen. Now, say the thing so we can go inside. Nah, you say it. Why should I say it? You say it. Oh, for Christ's sake, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. For Canada, where Canadians are from. That's awful. Where's the poetry, the insight? This is uninspired and lazy. Oh. For Canada, good start. Go Blue Jays, oh come on! I let you order Chinese and this is the best you can come up with. <laughs> Hi Lolo, -lo. blast! Even my phone greetings are terrible. We'll do those next. It's Teresa. I've been in a teensy little fender banger. I'm on my way. <laughs> For Canada, where maple syrup lacrosse double-double? Oh, now you're just mocking me. What's a six-letter word for hurry? Hmm, no serious damage. Horse, get this out of the ditch, will you? Please don't tell my folks about this. Smooth Canadian club. Have you been drinking? I had one beer. I, I swear, I'm not... No. Hmm, you're not inebriated, but there's a hint of alcohol in your blood. Provincial law requires me to confiscate your license. I'm not drunk. I don't understand. No? Fortunately, I just completed an RCMP workshop on talking to teens. Ahem. <clears throat> Word on the herd is short ones can't slop a jar of ski and skate the jam wagon, so mind your turnips, you silly frail. Teenagers don't talk like that. Hmm. The workshop did seem a tad outdated, especially the part about how bathtub gin leads to syphilis. Whatever. Just please don't tell my parents about this. I won't, Teresa, but you will. <sighs> There you go, clumsy. Let's drive you home. <laughs> no, we can't stop for drive through. <laughs> Guess what? I won first place at the high school science fair. Sponsored by Wheat Corp, a subsidiary of Wheat Thin Enterprises. We have to say that last part or their lawyers come after us. Congratulations, Petey. What'd you do? You're stupid, cause Cheech will buy it twice. I totally would. I designed a weight loss app that counts calories in food. I call it the Calogrammeter. 4,000 calories, jeez, Pop. How many calories was that, you food-shaming little jerk? 125. I hate to tell ya, but somebody already thought of that. Adolf Einstein. How was this possible? A product of Wheat Corp? Richard Wheaton stole my idea. Uh-oh! Don't want to be late for school! 42 calories? I wouldn't talk, kid. I've seen you come out of the shower. At least mine has a mustache. I really don't want to tell my parents. Can we just forget it? I can't stop thinking about last night. The drinking, the blowing. <gasps> I, I didn't blow that bad. I'm sorry to tell you, but you didn't blow very well either. Oh, yeah? I don't think your equipment was working very well. My equipment may be a bit old, but I assure you it works just fine. Or at least it did before you got your teeth marks all over it. How could there be teeth marks? That thing was so hard. Oh! In any case, if you don't tell your parents about your alcohol-fueled accident, I will. Now, if you'll excuse me. For Canada, where curling is looked upon favorably. Oh, these are atrocious. 
thanks to Cheech needing a bath toy, my Virgin Mary statue ain't a virgin no more. You better step up, uh, Saint Polycarp of Smyrna. Tell me your troubles, my child. McCool's been fooling around with my teenage daughter. What do I do? Oh, uh, I, I can't help you. I'm, I'm the patron saint of earaches and dysentery. Dysen? You mean diarrhea? And earaches. I'm very good with those. If you eat bad Indian food or get some of it in your ear canal, I'm your man. Who'd you screw to become a saint? Cook, you done with Polycarp here? I got a case of the squirts that's draining the life out of me. Squat before me, my son. Hey! I just spoke to Wheat Corp. Turns out any idea entered in the science fair automatically becomes their property. I like that business model. You want it, you take it. Screw everyone. I strenuously voiced my objection, and they promised to send an acknowledgement of my contribution. Whatever it is, I get 10% or I break your foot. I'm Pat on the back, and I'm here to give you, Petey McDougal, a pat on the back. Courtesy of Wheat Corp. Is it a check or a direct deposit? Who needs money? Not me, Jack. Who needs money? Take it all back. Money won't save you from a heart attack or get your mother off of the crack. Money is evil, that's a fact. But nothing says thank you like a pat on the back. Have a great day. Let me guess. You got a white-hot ball of rage right between your eyes. You, you want to put two slugs in Wheat Thin's face so they can't even have an open casket. Uh, not exactly, but I am quite miffed. Easy there, psycho. You want revenge? No, I want justice. Godfather. Shit. Do you ever know what buttons to push? Uh, can I grab a ride home off of one of you? McCool and Teresa? That's not so! What would she even see in that guy? Oh, I don't know. Maybe his big shoulders, strong arms, those tree trunk legs. Ah, not to mention his dreamy eyes, square jaw, and the fact that he probably gives horse penis envy. Yeah, okay, but apart from that, he's got nothing! Teresa, get your ass in here! All right, kid. What's up with you and McCool? Oh my god, he told you? No, he didn't, but ha! I knew it. Hey, that's entrapment. Right, Daddy? Sure is, Buttercup. Shame on you, Cook. If he didn't say nothing, I'm not saying nothing neither. Oh, is that so? Then you're grounded. Don't she have a right to counsel? No, and no phone call neither. Give me a phone. Fine, take it. And let us never speak of this incident that never occurred again. Jimmy, why don't you believe me? Cause we're talking about McCool. The guy's an overgrown Boy Scout. Sure, he's a ladies' man, but he'd never mess with my daughter. Oh, yeah? How do you like your Boy Scout now? Get my guns. All of them. Ooh, I can't wait. No more shooting bums down at the train yard. What? I mean, we're back, baby. How's everyone doing? Johnny, how's the golf game? Has your handicap improved, or are you still a golf ha! <laughs> Tough room. Is it something I said? What's, uh, what's going on? I'll see if I ever buy you guys Chinese food again. Cookie, what the hell is this? A scumbag like McCool ain't worth doing time over. So I figured we should get him where it really hurts. I was gonna do that. I was gonna shoot him right in the nuts. Jimmy, why kill someone when you can ruin their life? Death is but a single moment. Misery is forever. You, you, you're good. Where'd you come up with that line? It's a Snake Hammer song. Oh, look, Roman Pervlansky decided to swing by. Jimmy, there's a perfectly innocent explanation for that picture. The one of you grabbing my daughter's keister? This I gotta hear! Teresa was drinking and driving and crashed the SUV in a ditch. You're a real piece of work, you know that? Trying to blame the victim. 
I'm the victim here. I've been suspended. They took everything. My badge, horse, my catchphrases. You got off easy, scumbag. But not for long. Mark my words. I am gonna destroy you for what you did. <sighs> for Canada! Oh, come on, Daryl! Okay, now what? We give him a wedgie? No, wait, let's pants him! Shut up and let me do this. All right, wise guy. I'm gonna need you to put the old John Hancock on there. I'm afraid I can't do that. Gino, what are you doing? Ixnay on the Ames Nay, Okfei. You got a choice. Either your signature or your brains are gonna be on that contract. I always wanted to say that. I am so sorry about this. Shut up! Sign over the rights to the app or get skull humped by a nine, bitch. This is not what I signed up for. This is exactly what you signed up for. Don't go limp on me now. Give me that, Gina. Hey, look all you dumb motherfucker! Ah, <gasps> oh, thanks a lot. I didn't even get to save it a moment. You're not welcome in the Queen's Beaver. Hmm. Check out! Herbert! One of McCool stuffing his face with my lasagna. Send it in and say he's one of those guys who pukes after he eats. McCool's Bolivian? Are you out of your minds? McCool didn't grope me. He helped me after I drove the car into a ditch. What? Look, I drank a little that night, which is why I called McCool. Oh, crap. You drove our car into a ditch? You're grounded, young lady. I'm already grounded. Well, I'm temporarily ungrounding you so I can reground you. Yay! Wait, what? Teresa, we gotta talk about the real problem here. You drove drunk, crashed your car, and then called a freaking cop? You just pry the plates off, torch the car, and run. I can't believe you thought McCool would do something like this. You're grounded. You're all grounded. We're crucifying a guy for no reason. I gotta go make this right. Hang on, hang on. You mean this colossal screw up here has nothing to do with me? I don't know if I'm happy or lost. I'm too young to go to jail. Am I gonna die in there? Will people wanna fight me? Fight ya? No. Fight over ya? Yeah. Come on, let's chop him off, put him in quick lime, and get the hell out of here. We've snuffed out a life! We have to turn ourselves in. He's smoking. Yes, he was a handsome man, but that has nothing to do with... No, you dope! He's smoking! He's a freaking robot! Of course! Wheat Corp is at the forefront of autobotics research! Whew, at least we're only guilty of robicide, not murder. Congratulations. You just sucked the last bit of fun out of this caper. <laughs> Uh, Jesus, look at him. I know. Lucky bastard. Daytime TV, junk food, and a sweet track suit. It's all my dreams come true. It's pretty much your life already. Is that so? Do you see me in a track suit, Jimmy? Do you? Hey, straight. Jimmy, good to see you. Is that Cheech? You old bag of screws. How are you? Can I have some chips? Ha! Good old Cheech, always with the chips. McCool, what are you doing eating all that crap? I'm eating my feelings, Jimmy, and they're delicious. <laughs> Listen, about all that stuff in the papers, I had it all sorted out. They're printing retractions as we speak. Really? Yeah, I talked to your boss and explained the mix-up. You'll be reinstated by the end of the week. That's wonderful news, Jimmy, just wonderful. So, if there's anything else I can do, name it. I mean it. Anything. Um, let me think if there's anything, uh, oh, yes. Maybe you could get the hell out of my house and my life forever, you son of a bitch! Uh, 
On second thought, I like not being the f up every week. You ruined my life, Jimmy. But then I fixed it, so we're good. That's not the point. After all we've been through, couldn't you at least give me the benefit of the doubt? I never understood how doubt is a benefit. McCool, you know how I am. I shoot first, aim later. Well, thanks to you, I'll be forever known as the Groping Mountie. Well, you shouldn't have gone behind my back about Teresa's accident. If I ratted to you, she would never have trusted me again. Well, now I don't trust you. After the Jolly Rogering you gave me in the press, I don't trust you either. Yeah, well, screw you, McCool. Screw you, Jimmy. All right, <laughs> cut it out, you idiots. I can't stand listening to you hurting each other like this. You've been friends for a long time now. Arguing ain't gonna settle nothing. You two need to fight. Hmm. Okay, can we get out of here? You still gotta get what's yours, Petey. Let's rob the joint. Where are these clowns going? I wonder if Wheatin ever makes those robots have sex with each other. Now I know why you take the clothes off your action figures. Now get your head in the game! Maybe I can program one of them to sign back the rights to my Calligramma later. The name still needs work. Way to think big, dumbass. How come to sign over the whole empire? That's not possible. You may know more about criminal enterprises, but when it comes to technology, I am the master. More like master beta to robot porn. I made one little joke. I read your blog, Android Lover 98. <laughs> Oh, dear God. This is so creepy. Turn them off. Give me a second. That should do it. If we die, Petey, I just want you to know I never liked you. Fight! 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 You sure you won't be breaking some RCMP rule? Uh, yes. Uh, now that you mention it, we have to call this off. My hands are tied, Jimmy. You don't get reinstated until next week. Now go ahead, dance, boys. Damn. If we are going to do this, we will abide by Queensbury rules. Nuh-uh. Brooklyn rules are nothing. What are Brooklyn rules? There are no rules. But that's a rule. What? Don't you see? No rules is a rule in and of itself. I never thought of it that way. It's the exception paradox. It's quite fascinating, really, because... Would you two just fight already? Fight! 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 All right, let's do this. Here we go. This is it. I can't believe it's come to this. Me neither. You really hurt me, Jimmy. And you hurt me. Will somebody please hurt someone? It ain't nice finding out your own daughter calls someone else when she's in trouble. She's supposed to call family. I thought, in a way, I was family. But I'm her father! I may not be the best father, but if my kids are in trouble, I want to be the one to save the day. Hello? Dad, help! Gina and I are cornered by a legion of bloodthirsty robots! It's for you. Step away from those children, you robotic abominations! Prepare to have that finger snapped off and inserted into whichever orifice serves as your rectum. Nice one. Thank you. one Michael Bay movie. Which one? The terrible one. He ain't never made a terrible one, you dick. Jimmy, I'll distract the robots. You take Gina and Petey to safety. Uh, you take the kids, McCool. They stand a better chance with you. Petey, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. Hey, Robo Jerks! you! 
What are you, nuts? Trust me, Jimmy. In case you didn't notice, I kind of got trust issues. I know, but you can trust me, Jimmy. Now jump! <laughs> That's for thinking I would ever grope your daughter. Ugh. That was a fucking waste of time. Wheaton still owns PD Zap. There goes my 80%. Hey, we never agreed to keep talking. It'll be 90. That app's dead anyway. Now there's one that lies about how many calories you're eating. What are calories, anyway? Is that some kind of food? Well, Jimmy, I assume after I beat off all those robots, there's no hard feelings. No, sir. And to show you we're square, I want you to be the first to sign my cast. It would be an honor. What about you, McCool? Any hard feelings? Be honest. Hard feelings? No, none at all. <laughs> <laughs> what, did he write something cute? <laughs> <laughs>